So welcome, this is SiriusXM and Raymarine Understanding Fish Mapping. Uh, Raymarine just launched fish mapping with their Lighthouse 4 software, which came out at the very, very beginning of April. Um, so hopefully all of you are on your way to getting signed up for Lighthouse 4 and fish mapping if you're not already. Um, so we're gonna go ahead and get started. And we are recording this, by the way. So each and every one of you will have a recording of this that we will send to you afterwards. So feel free to take notes now, but do rest assured that we will send this back out to you. All right, uh, we've got tonight uh, Dan Dickerson. Uh, Dan is our direct customer support facing uh, technical representative um, based out of Maryland. Um, and Dan manages aviation and marine. We have an aviation division for pilots, uh, flight, flight pilots out there. Um, and I'm Jeff Leach also based out of the Maryland area. And uh, we're happy you all could join us tonight. All right, so for those of you who are new to SiriusXM, um, what makes SiriusXM different is that this is up-to-date graphical weather and fishing information directly on your MFD, directly on your chart plotter. Uh, it's not based on cell signal. It doesn't involve a, a smartphone. It literally comes directly from our satellites um, down to your MFD via a weather receiver. In this case, the Raymarine SR200 weather receiver. And this is complete coverage. On the right-hand side, you see a, a pale blue outline around the United States, uh, really North America. The pale blue area is roughly 150 nautical miles offshore, and that's our signal coverage area. So typically, depending on where you are, you go six to eight miles offshore and you lose cell signal. Well, we've got you covered then because we've got satellite direct feed data to your boat. All right. So I would be remiss in talking about fish mapping if I didn't mention that the highest tier of weather, Sirius XM weather that is, uh, comes with fish mapping. So the offshore weather service is at $60 weather service. So for an additional $40, for a total of $99, for, that's this fish mapping package per month, uh, you get uh, eight dedicated fishing features. So weather really is a key part of fish mapping. And we really want to impress upon everybody on this call that if you're not familiar with weather already and all you're interested in is fish mapping, that you really need to learn how to use weather. And we've got some, um, some webinars and videos for you that I'll explain later. But all right, so Raymarine weather. What you're looking at right here is a... a uh, Raymarine weather screen. So this is showing us weather radar. You can animate this. This is showing you storm specific storm cell attributes and the direction the storm is flowing. It's also showing you lightning strikes and the age of those lightning strikes. So there's really a lot to learn about weather, uh, as I mentioned. So, um, all right, but we are primarily going to focus on fish mapping and give you an overview on the features tonight. We did just pro, um, provide a weather webinar about a week ago, and we do have that recorded, and we are going to archive that. So that will be on our video web page for your purview uh, here very soon in the next few days. All right, moving right along. So fish mapping is a service that I just mentioned includes weather. It is, uh, includes eight dedicated fishing specific, offshore fishing specific layers. Um, and we're gonna go through each one of those here as we go through this presentation to make sure you fully understand what these features are all about. Thought we'd tell you right off the bat when the times are updated. So every single one of these features gets updated at a different time. So sea surface temperature contours is every 12 hours. And then every day, once a day, we have sea surface temperature fronts, 30 meters, which is uh, about 100 feet underneath the surface of the ocean. Uh, that's updated daily. Plankton concentrations, plankton fronts, sea surface height anomaly, which is your upwellings and downwellings, and then weed lines. Those are all daily. And then twice a week, our oceanographers, because we teamed up with an oceanographic group, PhD scientists here, but I'm gonna tell you about them in a few minutes. Um, twice a week, Tuesday morning and Friday morning at roughly 5 a.m. Eastern time, we get fishing specific fishing recommendations. Um, and we're gonna go through each one of these, but we thought you'd just tell you about the update times to start here. Yeah, and all those daily updates, uh, typically they're out in the, early in the morning as well. All right, and I just mentioned our oceanographic group, 
Maxar Technologies. Uh, there are very well-known publicly traded company, probably most well-known for their Google Earth imagery. Um, they provide Google Earth with a lot of their satellite imagery. Um, Maxar has a team of oceanographers. I think they have five oceanographers on staff. We've partnered with them and they are PhD scientists that collect and analyze raw satellite data from NASA and NOAA and other sources and then provide it for us. Um, they have been, their oceanographic group at least, has been serving the commercial fishing industry around the world and government entities um, for two decades plus. Um, so a really well-known group and a great partner for us. All right, Dan, you wanna jump in here? Okay, so we're ready to roll here. Uh, most of you are probably already familiar with this screen. This is a Raymarine Axiom screen uh, and the, uh, the Sirius XM features are available from the chart page. You can set up a, a dedicated window to go to on this screen if you should like, but for right now, we're gonna go into the chart page and uh, bring up the menu on the Raymarine. And uh, right now, most of you are probably using the detailed uh, charts or possibly fishing charts. Uh, once you've installed the SR200 and subscribed to SiriusXM, uh, you're gonna see these other uh, buttons appear. Uh, tonight, we're talking about the fish mapping stuff. So if we select fish mapping, now you'll see on the main menu list there, we've got we're in the fish mapping mode and a couple new lines of information have appeared fishing recommendations, fish mapping layers. Uh, there's a legend uh, now with Lighthouse 4 that shows up on many of the, the chart screens. And then lastly, uh, we're gonna go into settings here for just a minute and show you what's changed there. So now there's a new tab uh, when you're subscribed to fish mapping that shows up, which gives you this information. Basically, it's a nice diagnostic to go to, um, just to check it when you first uh, fire up the unit in the morning. Uh, the uh, fish mapping information is typically rebroadcast about every 20 minutes. So you're not gonna have to wait too long from the time you turn your plotter in on before the information starts coming in. Um, and it's gonna give you a timestamp, um, both when we send it and when it came into the machine. Uh, and then over here, it's gonna show if you're subscribed or not, uh, show your signal strength and your radio ID number. So if for some reason the, the data wouldn't be populating, for example, you might wanna call us with that radio ID or go online and get a refresh. That's a way to um, uh, send a new signal to your unit to wake it up if it's uh, lost its subscription status for some reason. So closing out this screen, uh, we're gonna jump over here. And uh, many of you are probably already familiar. This is our standard sea surface temperature page. This is what was available with Sirius XM offshore weather and even with the Coastal Weather Service, you get sea surface temperature out about 20 miles. So now, in addition to this traditional sea surface temperature, you're gonna have some additional type of temperature information. Uh, what we're gonna do here is go back into the fish mapping layers area, and there are three temperature layers available. The first one we're gonna look at is sea surface temperature contours. And this basically is the same thing as the screen we were just looking at, only instead of using colors, we're just drawing a line on screen and showing you what the temperature is along that line. And those lines are drawn in two degree temperature breaks. So not quite as uh, high resolution as the color version, because with the color version, you can get a little better than two degrees showing up as the colors change as you dial them in. But uh, certainly reduces the clutter on screen, lets you see the charts underneath. Uh, we're going to talk about bathymetry a little bit later in the program. Uh, so this is the uh, sea surface temperature contours. Uh, you can also uh, go in and adjust these contours. I'm going to show you that next. When you're on this screen right here, you'll notice there's now an extra line. When you have the contours turn on, turned on, that line shows up in the list. And if we go in and to the data to display limits, what it allows you to do is a couple pieces of the information can be adjusted. Right now they're turned off, so it's just set on whatever the preset was. So if I go in and select this top button here, I have a choice of off manual or auto. And if I set it to manual, then I can go in and adjust these temperatures. For example, here I've adjusted them so they're very narrow. We're set for a 72 to 75 degree temperature range. And you can see on screen, now, many of those lines have gone away that were 
uh, in the 60 degree temperature range or above 74. So we're looking at just the 72 to 74 degree temperature range. This is really helpful if you're looking for a specific fish that likes a specific temperature to just dial in where that temperature break is and head for it. Next, we're gonna go in and look at the subsurface temperatures. As Jeff mentioned earlier, these are temperatures of, uh, these are the water temperatures at basically 100 feet down. Um, and uh, to, to better show what this can do, I've also turned on the surface temperature. So now we're looking at it on the big screen. And what we can see here is the gold greenish color line is our subsurface temperature. Uh, so right here, we're looking at a, at a contour that's at 79 degrees. Uh, here, the red line is your surface temperature and we're looking at 76 degrees. So basically it's warmer in this picture at 100 feet down than it is on the surface. And this was just taken a few days ago. This is the Gulf Stream off the Carolinas. So basically that Gulf Stream is, is deeper down and it might've been a breezy day, cooled off the surface temperature a little bit. Uh, where we also find this useful is, is in Florida in the summertime when your water, your surface water is all about 80 degrees because it's so hot, finding a cool spot is gonna be helpful in finding some, some, some bait fish activity. So that's the advantage of the, the subsurface temperature in addition to the, the surface temperature information. And you can see we've got a menu down in the, in the lower corner that's giving us the range that we've set these temps to as well. Again, these temperatures, the surface temperature is updated every 12 hours. Uh, there was a new satellite recently launched that uh, gives us this, we used to update our temperature every three hours, but it was an average, an, an average every three hours of a three to seven day updates. So now what we're doing is we're getting the, the temps every 12 hours and it's very consistent. Uh, it's not affected by cloud cover. In addition to the infrared satellites, they're using a, a microwave satellites to, to determine uh, what the surface temperature is and it's become much more accurate. So now we're gonna go and look at the last temperature layer, which is sea surface temperature fronts. And this is where the oceanographers get involved. They send this information out daily and they look at the temperatures, but also apply factors like winds and currents. And they identify what we call a temperature front. And basically this is going to be essentially your most successful or, or the best temperature break that you can find is gonna be on a temperature front. And it's, a, it's done in four levels from weak to moderate to strong to very strong. So if you're heading out, um, if you can find a, a, a strong or very strong temperature front, that's gonna be one of the areas that you might wanna concentrate on. Also, um, if you find it hard to, to read these numbers on screen, you can also tap on one of those lines and you'll get the pop-up box that's gonna give you the, the number of the front, tell you it's a, a very strong front or what have you and give you the date that the, the time came in. And, and also it's giving us range and bearing, uh, you know, if you wanna head that. And of course, on the, any of the fish mapping screens, you can store your routes, show your routes and your waypoints. So next, we're gonna go look at plankton information. And there are two levels of plankton. The first one is contours. This is very simple. Uh, it, there's a, a light green line that's drawn on screen and a number follows along next to the lines. And the number along the contour line indicates the plankton concentration in milligrams per cubic meter. But there's actually a much better way to use plankton information. And that's with plankton fronts. So if we go back and pull out of the layers menu, the, seat, the plankton fronts, and here, again, it's similar to the sea surface temperature fronts, only it's a scale of two to four instead of one to four because a, a, a number one plankton front wouldn't be worthwhile uh, showing on screen. But this is the area, again, the oceanographers have gotten involved. They're looking at the plankton and they're identifying where the best layers of plankton are building up. Uh, it's, it's not uncommon on, on a plankton front, uh, on a number four plankton front, you, you can see the turbidity of the water change. You can see where it's going from turbid to clear. So here again, the, the fronts are, are, are moderate, uh, strong and very strong, labeled two, three, and four. Uh, you can tap on screen anywhere. It'll give you that pop-up box to identify it for you as well. And this information, 
Again, it's updated daily, typically comes out. I see plankton fronts, usually updated about one, two in the morning, something like that. So by the time you're heading out, you're getting the, the, the current information for the day. Now next, what I'm gonna do is turn on the plankton fronts and the sea surface temperature fronts at the same time. This is by far one of the best features you have to put you on the bait fish. If you can locate an area where a plankton front and a temperature front are close together or crossing one another or running parallel to one another, that's gonna be where you're gonna find some bait fish activity. That's gonna be the spot to find. Uh, also, I tend to find along uh, these fronts, uh, even though uh, we can't see small weeds from satellite, we'll talk about weed lines here later, but along these fronts, typically you'll see a small rip current that gets built as, these, as this plankton, for example, is building up and you'll see that small line of weeds. So if you're going after mahi, this might be an advantage as well to go look, find those small weed areas get on that bait fish, get into that shade, get into that mahi. All right. Uh, it doesn't look like we have any questions yet, but I will just remind everybody as we're going through these sections and these slides, if there are questions, considering you can't talk, um, please just chat them to us and we will literally pause during this presentation and, and answer your questions accordingly. Um, all right, so that was sea surface temperature and plankton. We're gonna keep on moving through the various features, going back to the menu, going to fish mapping layers. And now we're gonna talk about weed lines. And weed lines is, involves some, some thinking and uh, there's actually quite a few little subtleties surrounding weed lines. So what we're looking on screen here is weed lines as picked up from NASA satellites. Weed lines are detected by reflectivity off the water. So it's a reflection off of the water, which indicates where masses of weeds are. Um, the satellites really only detect the biggest areas of weeds, and they're not going to pick up little, little weed lines as well. And, and this is important to point out, especially to any Floridians on the East Coast that are fishing primarily within 20 miles ashore. Most of our weed lines, unless you're in the Keys, are not going to show up unless they're, you're at least 20 miles off. And the reason for that simply is reflective interference. Sometimes the bottom will reflect back up and create false positives and or other land masses or uh, other interference areas. So for that very reason, we do not want to create any false positives and give anybody any hopes that there are weeds in areas where they're not. That would not be good. So weeds are, are, are typically 20 plus miles out. And for most anglers in the mid-Atlantic and New England areas, that's not a problem because you're already going 40 to 60 to 80 miles off to the canyons. So, all right, Dan, if we can go back one screen here. So this is what weed lines look like. Let's look at the legend in the bottom right. Because what as a tool to help find weeds, which is like sometimes finding a needle in a haystack, we show you three days of data. So negative uh, TD is, is two days ago, negative 1D is one day ago, and today uh, is that brightest color there. So it goes from a faint shade of gray, which you can see there, that's two days ago, to one day ago, which is a little darker, to today, which is the darkest or the brightest. And again, as Dan is pointing out here, uh, as he goes through the presentation, you can see a timestamp. If you just click on, put your cursor on each one of those, you'll see exactly when that data came in. Much like the other features, as Dan mentioned, uh, they typically come in in the middle of the night. So and what does that mean? That means typically the ocean obviously is constantly moving. If you're out there at 10 o'clock in the morning, you got out to your spot, you're looking for a weed line, chances are, especially if it's in the Gulf Stream, it's not going to be in exactly that same position again. So. Uh, there is an additional feature we uh, are put together to help uh, help you find weeds, and that's called animation. So much like weather radar that animates, if you turn on animation, you can move the actual weeds from one day to the next. So if you see here, we're scrolling from two days to yesterday to today. Well, all of you guys that have been out there fishing enough know that weed lines can completely disappear from one day to the next. So this is just one tool to help you track where the weed lines are moving uh, and it's weed line animation. Dan, anything else on weed lines that I may have missed there? Yeah, just one final thought. The, the, uh, the actual 
image that you see there might not be the exact shape of the weeds. Basically, uh, this again, this is a software algorithm looks at the uh, reflectivity of the water and then the oceanographers uh, take a final look before it's uh, sent out over the air and they basically trace the areas that are determined to be weeds. So it's an approximation of what the weeds, the area of the weeds are, might not necessarily be that exact shape. Yep, and again, prominent weed lines only. All right, I will answer your questions at the end of this section. We can go back and actually spend some time on this if you have more questions. So bring the, keep the questions coming. I see you're chatting about them, that's fantastic. All right, so go back to fish mapping layers. <clears throat> and now we're gonna go to sea surface height anomaly. Much like weeds, this one um, actually takes uh, a little while to get understanding and, and to get used to, a lot of subtleties. So the ocean is constantly, has a, has a sea level, right? Um, and it is constantly rising and falling, but it doesn't rise and fall consistently. So what we're looking at here is an upwelling, kind of counterintuitive that an upwelling has a negative number. And by the way, these numbers are in inches. Um, so this is negative four inches. And what that ultimately means, let's go back to the other screen if we would for a minute here, Dan. What that negative four means is that the sea surface is actually lower than surface level, the, the average surface level. And what that means is ultimately it's going to rise back up and we call that an upwelling. And here's a depiction on this next slide that shows you what exactly is happening. That is trying to again, create uh, a move back uh, up and with it typically can come some nutrient rich water from down underneath the ocean. Now, conversely, the opposite of that is a downwelling. Downwelling are represented by positive numbers. So in this particular case, this is 12 inches above the average sea level. Uh, and that's where the uh, ocean has rised to a certain level and is now falling back down, flushing water out in not such a nutrient rich area. Here's the depiction of what that looks like. And so more important, and let's talk a little bit about upwellings and downwellings and what they impact, because I'm sure everybody on this call who's been out enough has seen what looks like a circular current or an eddy. And so downwellings, or let's just say upwellings to start with, are typically come, if it's a strong upwelling, comes in a counterclockwise rotation or an eddy. And then a downwelling comes in a clockwise rotation or an eddy. Well, as I mentioned, downwelling and upwelling in and of themselves aren't as important as the areas between them. So when you find these concurrent upwellings and downwellings, the area between them is called a convergence zone. The convergence zone is really what you're looking for. And again, you have to have two of these eddy systems or an upwelling and downwelling right next to each other with the contour line stacked really close together. And that area called a convergence zone tends to trap bait fish and obviously then attracts the pelagic species. So here's a depiction. Once again, um, you're looking at areas generally between negative two and positive two on the ocean sea level. And that's typically what is called a convergence zone. If you have an upwelling and downwelling right next to each other, uh, that's your money spot. All right, so I'm gonna answer a couple questions here. Um, what units will this work on? Just Axiom, yeah, Axiom and Axiom Pro. Uh, for, for fish mapping. And of course you need the SR200, which is uh, the Raymarine Sirius XM weather receiver. Uh, we're gonna talk a little bit about that in a few minutes. Um, so will the front information also be limited to 20 miles offshore was the other question. Uh, if we're talking about sea surface temperature fronts and plankton fronts, no, the answer is it, wherever there is a predominant sea surface temperature and or plankton front, those will show up and those could come well into 20 miles. Um, sometimes you see them right up close to shore, which probably are not super useful. Um, remember, and our oceanographers will say this again and again and again, you're looking for those features that attract fish. And in many cases, a lot of you are looking for bottom contours, or as Dan mentioned earlier, bathymetry. So when you find a ledge or an edge or a canyon, um, and it also pairs up or matches up with sea surface temperature front and a plankton front, maybe even a, a convergence zone, really that you're looking for as many of those positive uh, ocean features as possible stacked together. And as Dan mentioned a few minutes ago with sea surface temperatures, fronts and plankton fronts, 
when you stack those babies together and you have a, a strong or a very strong front, that's huge. That's critical. That's exactly what you're looking for. All right, keep the questions coming. We're going to keep on going. Okay, going back to the uh, the menu and pulling up fishing recommendations again. Uh, the, actually, I should pulling up. We haven't pulled up fishing recommendations yet, uh, so they're, they're on a separate tab from the other fish mapping layers. So once you've selected that one, then we've got six species here uh, that we currently have in our feed. And uh, this was taken off the Carolinas again, just a couple of days ago. It's starting to heat up out there. Uh, this is what the oceanographers are telling us are out there or should be out there in these areas. We've got billfish, kingfish, everybody is coming to town. Uh, so this is what your fishing recommendations look like. And as we mentioned earlier, uh, they're updated twice a week, Tuesday mornings and Friday mornings. Uh, you can click on any one of these icons if you uh, don't have the legend turned on, for example, and trying to figure out what color is what. Uh, just click on it. It'll tell you what it is. Um, now, it's important to keep in mind with these fishing recommendations. These are recommendations based on science. They're not based on catch reports. Uh, and and it's, it's not uncommon to not see many recommendations in a specific area. Basically, each species has a recipe, a certain water temperature they like, certain plankton concentration. There are several factors the oceanographers look at. And, and if all the elements come together, then they'll put a recommendation on a spot. This doesn't always happen. So again, when you don't have fishing recommendations in your area, it's best to fall back on those temperature fronts and plankton fronts and, and other information. The other thing to be aware of is that uh, if you were going out after uh, one species and there were no recommendations for tuna, for example, uh, you might want to try in one of the areas where there is another species, because basically what they're saying is there's certainly something going on in, the, in that area that's attracting bait fish. Um, and and it, more often than not, you're going to, you know, where there's one species, there will, will be others as well. So that's how the fishing recommendations work. So here I've overlaid the plankton fronts, the temperature fronts, along with the fishing recommendations. And you can kind of see a picture starting here. A lot of the recommendations do tend to follow along the plankton fronts and the temperature fronts. Another key thing to pay attention to here is, is that while the fishing recommendations come out twice a week, the plankton and temperature fronts come out daily. So if I were to bring up this screen and I would see that there were uh, on a Sunday, for example, that the plankton fronts and the temperature fronts were about 10 miles off of where the fishing recommendations had been, I'd go for the fronts because more than likely things have shifted a little bit. I would probably start where the recommendation originally was and then head towards where the fronts are. So that's one of the uh, ways you can use the layering system to, to better improve your chances. And again, you can tap on an area to bring up the information about what you're seeing. All right. Now, one more exciting thing that Ray Marine has done is in addition to putting the fish mapping information on a dedicated screen, they are giving you the ability to add all of this information to your fishing charts. So here I've just put up a simple Navionics chart that shows me bathymetry, my bottom contours. Uh, but if you're using Seymour or Seaview or any of the other charts out there that have some type of bottom imagery in the fishing chart mode, if they work with your Axiom, then you'll be able to overlay the fishing, fish mapping information on those charts, just like we're gonna do here. So when I bring up the menu, when I'm in the fishing chart section, then I have this fish intel. And if I go there, you can see we've got the three categories. We're looking at our fish mapping layers here, fishing recommendations, and see I've left the tuna turned on. And then even more exciting is the original sea surface temperature that we talked about. Ray Marine has given us the ability to overlay that on the bathymetry with the fish mapping information as well. So this is something nobody else is doing right now. So here it is on the big screen. We've got the fishing chart with contours showing up on screen and fishing recommendations and sea surface temperature. So we can see our temperature breaks as color is all shown right there on the, on the same screen. 
And then here's another closer up example of that, of that previous screen that we were looking at. However, now it's overlaid on top of the charts showing bathymetry. So you can see where the canyons are. You can see where uh, other information is on the chart that you might want to pay attention to and see where those recommendations and, and, and how those fronts work around those areas where the bathymetry tends to vary. All right, it doesn't look like we have any additional questions, so we're just going to keep moving forward, but keep the questions coming if you got them. All right, uh, mentioned a few minutes ago that you need the SR200, which is the most up-to-date weather receiver that Raymarine offers. The MSRP, for those who don't have it now, is $449. There is a really special offer going on right now. So we have a $100 rebate that lasts through December. That you, you can get that at SiriusXM.com forward slash marine rebate. Quite a few people take advantage of these. Um, you literally just sign up, buy the weather receiver, provide proof of purchase, sign up for the service, and we send you a $100 Visa gift card. Fairly simplistic. Um, and then there's a $75 bonus rebate going on right now from Ray Marine for the SR200. Uh, and that goes through more or less Memorial Day. Um, and that can be found on our site or the Ray Marine site. Um, so that's $175 value for those of you who do not have the receiver and, and want to get a little extra money back. Um, and then we do have a one month trial on the fish mapping service. That's just a standard trial for anybody, um, who wants to use it. And it's, you know, valued at a hundred dollars, uh, cause it's $99 a month for this service. Um, and you can simply call the 1-800 number to sign up. Uh, everybody needs to download in order to access fish mapping, you need to download the software. Uh, and you can find that at the raymarine.com site under the support tab. Um, so you want to click on support uh, and then look up software and down, download Lighthouse 4. Fish mapping won't work without Lighthouse 4. Yeah, you're, uh, or if those of you who have uh, uh, internet access set up, Wi Fi set up to your MFD, um, it is uh, also downloadable that way. All right. Uh, fish mapping, as I mentioned a couple of times, is $100 a month. This is what we call our super set. It comes with the highest tier of weather, which we call offshore weather, um, which is already a $60 value. So the additional eight fishing specific features are about $40 bucks, um, if you're doing the math. Um, and that is our super set. It's a fixed cost. There's no extra fees for data usage. Um, and we wanted to point out as well seasonal suspend. If you're not using the service, say your boat's on the hard, getting repairs, or, or maybe it's just cold, or, or you're taking a hiatus from fishing, don't pay for the service. Seasonally suspend it. And we encourage seasonally suspended ver suspending versus deactivation. Deactivation is a, a real pain. You got to call a call ser service agent, cancel your service. Then you got to call back when you want to reactivate. You got to pay a reactivation fee. Seasonally suspending really just puts your account in escrow. Um, and allows you to uh, speak to a call agent and then literally have them send a signal whenever you want it. So you could call right now and be like, I want to suspend my service for six months. And on X date, say August 5th in this case, send me a wake up signal that will literally ping your, your weather receiver and wake it up on August 5th and then start your account back. Um, so it just makes it a lot easier. We fully recommend doing that as opposed to deactivating. Uh, and of course, the Sirius XM weather receiver, in this case, the SR200, um, does enable Sirius XM radio as well. So you can pick up radio through the weather receiver. It is a subscription in and of itself. You can pair that together and make it one subscription. And in fact, if you do, you get roughly a 30% savings um, on the um, entertainment subscription itself. Um, so, and quite a few of our customers um, are playing radio because as we all know, your playlist on your phone when you're beyond cell signal and terrestrial radio signal gets old real fast. All right, Dan, next slide. All right, we wanna point out to everybody here and encourage everybody on this call, we are supporters of the Dolphin Fish Research Program, otherwise known as the DRP. Um, we all on this call probably know that dolphin, if, you know, experienced some trauma and some setbacks in recent years. Uh, and we wanna do our part to help uh, understand the population and the species and their migratory patterns, et cetera. So 
We've partnered with the Dolphin Fish Research Program. We're really encouraging anybody on this call. We have a decent amount of ambassadors right now that represent us that are tagging on a regular basis. Um, and simply, if it's not the bigger mahi, at least it's the mahi that you are not uh, that you're you're going to release. Um, you don't you know necessarily need to catch your full limit. Sometimes that's just wasteful. Um, so we encourage everybody to tag. And there's free tagging kits. It's fairly easy. Once you learn how to tag a mahi, you can literally do it in under a minute. Um, and it's dolphintagging.com forward slash tags. That's where you order your tags again for free. There's a whole host of videos that will teach you how to tag mahi. And we'd really appreciate if um, if you folks are, you know, are interested, uh, we'll, we'll start tagging some, some mahi. Um, we have one ambassador that tags literally a thousand mahi a year at least. Um, which is impressive and super, super useful. And let us know if you have any questions about this program. I'm happy to introduce anybody on this call to the executive director, if you wanna be a supporter, uh, or if you just wanna learn more about the cause. All right, what we're looking at here is our marine resources page. We have a whole host of uh, ways for you to get educated, primarily uh, starting with our websites at SiriusXM.com forward slash marine or the SiriusXM.com forward slash fish mapping. We also have a general YouTube channel with all our marine videos, but most importantly, I'd say on this page is our video library, because this is the how-to content. This is where we host our how-to short videos, as well as our webinars. And that's right in the middle here, series6m.com forward slash marine library. You'll notice that there's a tab that says Raymarine. So click on that tab and any content or short how-to videos or webinars that we produce to date will be there and really just an awesome resource for you guys to understand the service much better. Dan and I, by the way, will be creating new videos, how-to videos for fish mapping specifically um, in the next few weeks, as well as this webinar should be up there uh, hosted um, probably next week, I would think. Um, and I think I mentioned this before, but I'll just go ahead and reiterate uh, that we will be sending out the recording of this webinar to each and every one of you and everybody who signed up tonight. Um, so that you can have it and you can just digest it on your own terms um, in front of your computer. Um, follow us on social media. We encourage everybody to join us at facebook.com forward slash SiriusXM or at SXM underscore Marine for our Instagram accounts. And I think we did have one question here and think of others. If you guys have any questions, we're going to take questions for a few minutes before we adjourn. Um, so the cost for uh, Sirius XM radio and fish mapping. So fish mapping comes uh, at $99.99 a month, that fixed cost. Again, that comes with your offshore weather and the eight dedicated fishing features. And then it really depends on what radio tier you sign up with. But uh, if you sign up for radio and put it under the same subscription, um, you get a 30, roughly a 30% discount. Um, and Dan, do we have those package details here? We don't, I don't think. Have yeah, no, we didn't put them on the, on the fish mapping webinar, okay. but I, I can tell you that there's two, two main packages. Normally they're 1699 and 2299. When you have a weather or fish mapping subscription, those prices drop to 1299 and 1699. And that uh, is a month. Um, yes, that is per month. Yep. Uh, so you can sign up for monthly billing, quarterly billing, semi-annual billing, annual billing, uh, there is no discount for annual billing. It's just 12 times the monthly rate. Um, so it's just a matter of convenience it's being set up for annual billing, if you like. And you can suspend a monthly plan just as easily as you can suspend a, uh, an annual plan. All right. Uh, oh, looks like I missed the Q&A uh, area. Um, thank you, Bill. Yep, got to have it. Thank you. Appreciate that. Um, yeah, Bill's in... Uh, joining us from Texas and goes offshore quite a bit. And um, to say that uh, our weather service has quote unquote saved his bacon a few times probably would be an understatement. I think I can speak for you, Bill. I know you can't speak uh, uh, on this webinar, but it's an invaluable service. And that's why we encourage anybody on this call who is literally not aware of weather and just getting on for fish mapping, don't forget you have weather. Uh, and if you need to reach us with any questions or any technical support regarding Sirius XM, you can reach out to marine.support at SiriusXM.com. Uh, if you do have Raymarine specific questions about uh, your hardware or your chart plotter or something that's really geared towards Raymarine, you can reach out to them at raymarine.com forward slash support. Um, and then of course, I mentioned this earlier, but if you want uh, to take advantage of that free trial offer when you sign up, 
that number is down below here, that 844-342-0665. All right, um, I'm gonna check the Q&A in the chats one more time. Um, and if there's anybody that wants to stick around and talk to us afterwards via chat, we're happy to support you uh, and answer questions as needed. Dan and I can stick around for a few minutes. Um, and again, thank you so much for joining us. Uh, we appreciate your support. We hope you're loving the service. And uh, please stay in touch with any questions or technical support or feedback. By the way, we love seeing your pictures too. Um, give us your stories. Tell us your pictures, whether that's a weather incident or a fishing incident. Um, so that's, that's great. 